I'm John Shanehalls, Pioneer Field Agronomist in Northern Ohio. I want to spend a couple minutes on a hot July afternoon sharing some thoughts about fungicide in corn and soybeans. I want to think about considerations when evaluating a fungicide decision, what timing to use in corn and soybean fungicide applications, and what products to consider on corn and soybeans. The first thing that I consider when making a fungicide recommendation in corn or soybeans is what is the overall yield potential of the field. It's important to understand that fungicides don't necessarily add bushels to a field, but they help to protect the real potential that is already in that field. A field with high yield potential, planted timely, good stand, good plant health, good nitrogen management, high water holding capacity as we get dry, will have many more bushels to protect than a field that was damaged by water or severely drought stressed or has other limitations. If we focus on higher yielding fields, we also want to think about management history and disease history. Most of the diseases that we try to control in corn, things like northern corn leaf blight, gray leaf spot, tar spot, which is a new disease that's shown up in Ohio over the last several years, those are diseases that survive on corn residue and are more likely to show up in cases where we have corn back to corn, no-till situations, or where high disease pressure has existed in the past. These fields should be prioritized. We also want to consider what tolerance the corn or soybean variety has to diseases, check the scores for what you have planted in the fields, and finally, scout the fields and see if there's already disease present. Even if there's not disease present, a fungicide may be warranted as the goal, just like with weeds control, is to protect the plant and control those diseases before they're even present. In a case like tar spot, once the symptoms are present on a leaf, that disease has already been present in the field for two to three weeks. When thinking about fungicide timing, in soybeans, we want to focus on the R3 time frame. I'd rather be late than early, so late R3 or even the beginning of R4 will provide the most balance for timing and residual control during pod set and pod filling. In corn, much the similar situation. We want to focus on R1, but I'd rather be a little late than too early. In, in corn, especially if you're applying a little early, Make sure not to add adjuvants to that tank that may cause arrested ear development or issues with pollination. Finally, what products to consider? I recommend using products with multiple modes of action to ensure we have curative and protective capacity from that fungicide. Most products will give about two to three weeks of residual control with a high quality product. Approach Prima is an excellent choice of fungicide in corn or soybeans as it's rated good to excellent for all of the major diseases that we control with a fungicide application. When making a fungicide application, whether in corn or soybeans, adding an insecticide has shown to provide synergistic benefits. To summarize, focus prioritizing fungicide applications on corn and soybean fields with high yield potential, especially as dry weather persists. Fungicides, even during dry weather, can help protect that plant when rains return, as well as increase late season plant health and standability when these stresses are present. Focus on the R1 timing in corn, the R3 timing in soybeans, and use a product with multiple modes of action mixed with an insecticide for best results. Contact your local Pioneer sales rep, myself, or your territory manager for more details and information. Thanks for watching. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.